From where you were before this entire procedure, how much of a physical journey has this been for you to get to this fight? Hey, it's, um, whew, I can't believe you asked me this. <laughs> Are you sure? Positive, yes sir. Okay. So it's cool to take my mask off, huh? From this distance, I think we're good. Okay, cool. Um, would be kind enough to express that again? I was just wondering what the, the physical journey has been like from where you were to getting to this fight. What, what has it been like just to, to change your body into fight shape? I don't know, it's a 100 pound process. And um, I started, my wife told me, well, she, she pretty much asked to do the treadmill for 15 minutes a day. So that 15 minutes turned into two hours a day. And from that, I started doing two hours on the treadmill, an hour on the bike. Then I started running. And um, I was, uh, I don't know where I was. I was, I wanted to hit the miss. I don't know why I wanted to hit the miss. And someone said that they knew Rafael Cadoza. Cadozo, I believe it is, and Cadera, please. And um, he held the mitt for me, and um, it was a, I had to lose the weight, of course. But after I lost the weight, you know, I went vegan for the whole two years and just never eat anything, just starved and exercise. But when I was hitting the mitt, and um, we, I believe we showed it on Instagram, and it got it got like over two billion hits. And before that, that little 20 second combination, I was in the bed for six weeks. I was all messed up. And then I just got um, comfortable with the process of punching and moving and then eventually sparring. And it was really calm. It was really, listen, I'll never call another fighter a bum again. You know, because um, the process of getting in shape to fight somebody is just um, psychologically overwhelming if you're not an experienced fighter. You mentioned that for some reason you wanted to hit the mitts. Are you surprised that you wanted to? Because that was something for years you shied away from. You didn't want to go back to the boxing. So when you had that, that sudden desire, like, I I'd, like to, I'd like to hit the mitts again, were you surprised at yourself? Hey, listen, this, this, this stuff started with all my friends. I took this, um, I don't know, what's this? It's a natural medicine from um, alternative. It's called the toad. I took the medicine, and the medicine told me to get in shape. You said the medicine told you to get in shape. Yeah. You also mentioned before that the gods of war came and tapped you on the shoulder and said it was time to go again. Well, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much that spirit that I took that they called the toad, the god uh, monocle, um, yeah, it really blew my mind. So I started, it told me to come back and start getting in shape. Is it fun? Has, it, has this been fun for you? I know it's been hard work, but is it fun to know that you're This back? is fun right now. This bit here. This and then boom, then we're going to the fight. This is the fun part. Everything else is uh, hell. Your career, back when you were an active fighter, has had the highest of highs and then the lowest of lows. If you compare yourself now as a fighter to at any point in your prime, how similar do you think you are to the guy who came and destroyed Trevor Burbick or the guy towards the end? Where do you think you rank now compared to in your prime? Hey, I never put myself in that perspective because I, I didn't know what I was then. I just, I'm just very more um, comfortable in the way who I am now, to a certain degree. Not totally, but to a certain degree. So I can't compare the two, but I, this is what I want to do. I can say this, my last fight, I didn't have no interest in doing it. I'm interested in doing it now. How many rounds do you think you sparred for this fight? Quite a few. I couldn't um, question the number of rounds, but quite a few. What was it like mentally to, to get back in the ring after so long and, and be trading punches with someone? What was that like for, as an experience? Well, the first day was disastrous. <laughs> okay. And, um, but neither, um, n uh, well, how do I express this? During that session of boxing when I was getting shellacked, never once did I say, what the fuck am I doing here? Um, I said, ooh, I belong here. That, that must prove something to you, right? To, to, to know that, okay, this is going terribly, but I'm not quitting. That must tell you that you're doing the right thing, that you're, you're belonging back in that ring. In some degree, it tells me I'm a fool. Okay. But um, I love the other side that tells me I can do it. Yeah, I pretty much feed that one. With Roy Jones Jr., what are you expecting tomorrow night? Are you expecting him to be... A little bit slower. Are you expecting him to try and to stick and move for the first few rounds? What exactly do you expect out of Roy tomorrow night? 
I have no idea. Most likely, part of I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna just go right at him as soon as the bell. And we're just gonna see what happens. Uh, have you been frustrated with all this sort of pre-fight talk about oh, that there's these restrictions, there's this restrictions for you? You've put your body through a training camp, and now people are saying that you're almost putting on a show. Does that kind of insult you? You know, you're in here to fight properly. Well, listen. Um, from many perspective, how they may look at it, um, it's going to be entertaining. You know, because um, I'm a fighter, he's a fighter. And of course, you know, we're going to go with the internet throwing punches. And during that process, anything can happen. Do you think you can still hit as hard as you used to be able to? We're going to see. Good stuff. And so, I guess just one last thing from me how do you see the fight going? What's your prediction? Do you have a prediction? Do you think I can knock him out in the first round or the eighth round? How do you predict this fight going? As soon as I hit him good, you know, I'm listen. I don't know. Maybe I don't know how to go easy. I don't know. I just um, don't want to say the wrong things because some people get angry, you know, like the boxing commission. So I don't like to say the wrong things. How's that? Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Mike, this is something I never thought I'd do, uh, cover a fight in 2020 with Mike Tyson. Uh, you were last in the ring 15 years ago. Uh, what has the process been like for you, and what has changed now compared to 15 years ago as far as training goes? I do the same process. I, I box, I run, hit the bag, and it has the same um, momentum, same um dedication I would have never lost the weight is there anything that's changed uh, for you in the last 15 years as far as pre preparing for a boxing match well I want to do it you know most of the time I was um, obligated to do it from a, a contract perspective if you don't do this we'll take everything you have we have your cousin they've been black and mailing me if you if you don't fight we'll take everything you have and this and that you would be back in brownville <clears throat> so you know during that process i didn't really want to fight and now it's a totally different environment where yeah, this is fun you know we were we were doing some business at um i have a couple of business partners and we were um fortunate it was successful in a few um endeavors and I just wanted to do this. My brother in law asked did I want to fight somebody, somebody offered money for me to fight somebody and at first I said no and then I said, Hey, will he fight me? Will he box me? And the guy said yes and it was, we went from I don't know, Bob Sapp, um, Tyson Fury, Shannon Briggs, um, and now we got Roy Jones. You've turned your life around so many times. What do you credit that to? What is that? Tell me about that. What did, what did you mean by turning my life? You've, what you've did had I do? so many. You've had so many reinventions of yourself. You've had so many acts. You've had so many new chapters, and you keep building on to your story. Uh, wh what do you credit that drive and spirit to? Um, I'm just. Um, I'm just struggling like everyone else here. I'm learning from life's mistakes, a life um, on wins. You know, it's. I, I'm doing what you're doing. We all out here surviving. Some struggling more than others. Some struggling with demons that we create ourselves. We're just out here in this world getting pitched punches of life. You have all these people around you again. The you, you, mobs are after you, kind of like it was in your heyday. What is that feeling like that you still draw that energy and attraction? Well, I don't know really how to take that. The only thing I want to do is to um, be present for my wife and my kids, my niece, you know, my family members and my close friends. Um, this is a part of my life that, I, you know, I've pretty much thrown away. I, it doesn't have the appeal like it once had, but I, I like to manipulate it. I like to um, use it for a way I can um, voice my ego and make people come to fights and all that stuff. This is all beautiful and it's meant to be this way. But um, I, don't, I don't take it serious as I did when I was younger. When we talked last year at the Tyson Ranch, you were, you were telling me about the toad and how it kills your ego. Uh, is your ego back now? It's, it's, it's so much more healthier than it ever been. And uh, you've famously said everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. 
You're going to get punched in the mouth tomorrow. What's your plan? Well, I'm going to go to plan B, punch him back. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Hey, Mike. How you doing? Good, thanks. When you were the heavyweight champ in the world, did you ever think about what life would be like in middle age? Did you ever think that far ahead? No, I didn't think I lived that long. I was just so intense and took myself so serious back then. So you never could have imagined being in this situation? Not in a million years, no. What have you learned as you've gotten older about your body and about aging that maybe was maybe isn't as true as you thought it was when you were younger. When, when, when you were coming up, it was unusual for a 30-year-old fighter to be still competitive and at the exactly. top Exactly. It's just that um, the human species in general had, um, I don't know the word, it exonerated itself, it exalted itself. What, what is that called again? We advanced ourselves. We're evolved. different. Yeah, we evolved to another species almost. You know, um, what we're doing now, we're living longer, we're, we're curing longer, we're getting, we're getting drastic, more drastic disease. The, the disease now changes its form for it. It lasts longer and more difficult to find any kind of vaccine for it. I'm talking about um, diseases that we're not even conscious of yet. And um, I don't know. You tell me. You said it. You, you mentioned that you're feeling healthier than you have in a long time. How does that how does that manifest itself? Do you sleep better? Do you eat better? Do you have more energy? No, I, I, I'm a horrible sleeper, but um, I just don't leave my house. I never, I, my, my wife my wife and kids, they probably, um, they can't imagine me being in the house this long. At one, listen, I would get up in the morning, I would leave the house at 9 in the morning, and I would come back 9 the next morning. And it was <laughs> never, I was one of those, House, house, those house husbands, and um, time humbles you, and you want to see your children grow. You want to see them evolve like you. And you want to see them have a great childhood like yourself. And so that's basically what I do. I just want to um, evolve myself with my family and my friends who I love. That's what it's really all about now. And the older we get, we start to lose so many people. Life is just a flick of the eye. What will you consider a success tomorrow night? Tomorrow night? Yeah. What, what will make tomorrow night a success? Or is it already a success before you even get in that ring? Listen, um, we're here, me being here is a success. Me just existing. Me just existing as a human being is a success. And that's more of, um, I don't look at life as being age. I look at life as energy. And you don't bring your age to the table. You bring your energy to the table. You don't go meet people, hey, I'm Bob, I'm 59. You don't do that. You say, I'm Bob, I'm such and such, and you do with enthusiasm too, because enthusiasm is contagious, and you want the same response. This, this, you mentioned it earlier in the process for this fight, but this may not be the last thing for you. You want to see where this goes and, and, what, and what you can do you know, beyond this. What, what's, what's, what's your dream with that? What, what, what do you want to see? Well, as, as I was saying earlier, um, we got this um, league, Legends Only League, and we're getting ready to, um, and it's a strong possibility we're getting ready to take it to another level and have other sports compete. Like, we were discussing one, just for instance, Dennis Rodman and Men, Men of Peace doing a one-on-one -on -one game to 11. After they get like three months to get in shape and we could um, film them getting in shape and whatever, it's the whole what it is. And we could make um, a series out of it. How about for you personally? Excuse me? How about for you personally? Um, God willing, um, sky's the limits. Could be anything, huh? Yeah. And why, why do you think that's important? Why do you think the League of Legends is important? Is, is it important that people see that? see that? See that aging is not what it once was? Well, as we stated earlier in the, in the beginning of our conversation, we are evolving. And sometimes we can't handle the involvement, and but we 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 stayed shelled because it's just it's overwhelming that I could still live through this, but they still won't accept me because of my age. It's I don't know. I was what this whole thing started because I was watching Jerry Rice, and I guess he did a five something, and so he did a a four nine or something really meager, 
um, deterrent from his best number, and they said he can't play anymore. People still want to see him play, even though he's a little bit slower, they still want to see him. They want to see him more than they want to see the guy playing his position in any team that's functioning now. So um, I looked at it from that perspective. I looked at it from the numbers perspective as well because um, the world is all about numbers now, especially when it comes to Instagram, right? So, yeah. I was told that before, and I, did, I didn't agree with him. The light world is all about numbers. You're born, you die. Things come into existence, then they don't... Then, then it doesn't work anymore. It's just what it is. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Right down here, buddy. Right down the stairs. Okay. Appreciate you, Mike.